saying that uh, so my my point of view is the one of Kafka's operations. So um, why do we need to talk about a convergence in the first place? Well, if you're working in Kafka's operations, chances are that you have a function like that and you're interested in minimizing this function, you're interested in minimizers of f. Uh, it, it's usually the case that the original problem is too hard to solve, and what you would like to do is to maybe approximate the function with some other functions fn, for which you can possibly study, that you can hopefully study. Uh, but since the focus is the one of uh, minimizing uh, the function of f, we would like some condition on how this fn would converge to the original problem so that we can still get some information about the minimizers of f, knowing something about the minimizers of fn. Uh, another reason why we would like to talk about a convergence is that maybe your functional depends on many different parameters, maybe there's Epsilon years and gamma years and delta and, and if you're lucky enough or maybe someone would say there is any justice in this word, but taking some limit that's maybe Epsilon goes to zero or whatever you want, uh, you end up with something that doesn't depend anymore on this parameter and it's maybe easier to study. But again, if we really want to know something about the minimizers of the original function of, from something that we infer on the minimizers of the limiting problem, we need to have some suitable uh, definition of what this conversion should be. And as I would point out with examples, uh, the standard, the more standard uh, notions of conversions that we have, like point-wise convergence and uniform convergence, they don't quite, they don't quite, um, uh, they don't quite work as well as we would like them to with uh, minimizing problems. Okay, so uh, now that we're convinced that talking about convergence is actually important, uh, so let's let's write down the, the main questions that I want to address today. So suppose that you're given a sequence of functionals fn. Uh, on some space, um, on some space x, and suppose that uh, suppose that we have x n in x uh, that minimizes uh, suppose that x n minimizes f n. Uh, this of course means that fn of xn is below fn of x for every x is. Just for a bit of context, yeah. is x going to be like some subset of a topological vector space? X is going to be a magnet space. Uh, so maybe I can put uh, I'm going to make this more okay. precise later. Uh, the examples I have in mind, like when I when I look at fn, I call them functionals. <coughs> usually, x is going to be some space of constants, like some solid space or something like that. But we're also going to see an example where x is just the real line. With the <coughs> so yeah, it's just a just an L, just a magic space. Um, so what we would like to know is that so does the limit as n goes to infinity of xn, uh, if it exists. Uh, minimize anything. And more, and in particular, like in what sense <coughs> In what sense does F n uh, have to converge to F 
uh, to ensure that minimizer is of that band. This one be <laughs> that this one be the, the graph of u one, and since the slope of uh, 
uh, so this is u1. And since this level of, zero of u1 is always 1, then f, uh, f1 of u1 is 0. And since f uh, is positive, that means that u1 minimizes f1. Uh, then let's look at <coughs> this one. Uh, let me call it u2. The graph is this one. Uh, similarly, the slope of u2 is only, uh, so is of course, 1 again, uh, or minus 1, but like the square is only 1. It is it's always 1. u2 minimizes f2. And I can keep, keep going here. Uh, so let's say this is u3 that minimizes f3. So I don't want to write this explicitly what un is, but um, like iterating this procedure, we're going to get a sequence un that minimizes fn. Except wouldn't u1 also minimize fn? For sure, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. And all, yeah, all of these ones, they're minimizers for all of the apps. Um, yeah, I'm just picking one sequence that, that's going to like point out a problem with oh. my right. So un minimizes fn. Uh, <coughs> if fn of un is 0 for every n. Uh, and also notice that the i of un is, I think it's 1 over 2 to the n or something like that. It's going to 0 uniformly. So un goes to u, which is the function constant 0. And the problem here is that um, f of u, well, what is f of u? f of when, when u is 0, that's 1. So f of u is actually 1, which is strictly greater than 0 f of any u, u1, let's say. So the limit of minimizers doesn't minimize f. And uh, we can look at this for, for a second and realize that the problem is that this function of f is not lower semi-continuous. In other words, Yeah, so you get that. Yeah. 
FN is just a restriction of that, and this restriction is going to disappear in the in the demo. Okay, so um, this is to point out that uh, something here went wrong, and we need to encode some kind of inequality of this kind if we want things to work out. Okay, so I think we're ready for the definition of gamma convergence. I should write this on a blackboard that I keep somewhere where I can find that. Ah, uh, what's your last? <coughs> okay, so definition. So we say that a sequence. Space X into the extended field gamma converges to F R if for all X in X we have um, Maybe I want to write this one here so that then I slide this one over or something in the home. Uh, conditions I, it's called uh, limit inequality. And it says that for every Sequence XN uh, converging converging to X. We have that F of X is below the limit as N to infinity of FN of XN. So we want this one for every converging sequence to X. Um, so what are we doing here? We're somehow we're taking our functionals and we're like uh, pushing them down in some sense. But we don't want to lose the control that we have like on the functional on the family of functionals. So we need we need somehow to encode the fact that we want to be able to uh, reach the energy landscape of the original functionals with this function that we have here. And that's called a link soup in a body. <coughs> or existence of a recovery sequence. And it says that there exists a sequence XN converging to X such that f of x is greater than the limit so as n is the infinity of uh, fn of oh, xn. And the sequence xn, this is called Rigori sequence. <coughs> so then given the one, that's actually going to give us fx equals just the limit? Uh, The limit of this, yeah, yes, yeah, and there are like <coughs> hundreds of ways of mixing these two conditions and make something mean, yeah, for sure, yeah. Okay. So I had in mind to do this later, but maybe this is actually better. One for an example. So that uh, so let X be R with the uh, Euclidean uh, distance, and consider uh, F and of X.
to be the cosine of an answer. Then uh, Fn gamma converges to minus 1, the constant function minus 1. And I'm sure that you all believe in that the naming field value is satisfied. Uh, so the tricky one, I guess, is the existence of a recovery sequence. And the point here is that for every x, so you use that, this n here is increasing so that the cosines are actually oscillating faster and faster. And you can always find like a sequence that like you can you can pick a point that lies in one of these valley and as n increases uh, you're able to to pick one of these sequences that actually reaches one at x. Make sense to everyone? Is it clear that the gamma convergence is like to a unique limit? Uh, it is true, yeah. Okay. And like, that's that's because of what Andy said. Like actually mixing this one together, you get that it has okay, to okay, be yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you get yeah you get the, the gamma thing is exactly equal to this so value here. Yeah. So point wise you get the the Fravi X that you get things. Okay. So I don't know. Uh, isn't this kind of weird? I guess like the cosine is going to minus one. Uh, surprising, kind of surprising. Uh, you get the idea. Okay, so uh, let's move on to study uh, some properties of these gamma convergence. Uh, something that is very useful is that it is stable under continuous perturbations, <coughs> meaning that if uh, if f n uh, gamma converges to f. And we have a and g is uh, let's say d continuous, like continuous with respect to the metric d. Then uh, the sequence f n plus g gamma converges to f plus g, and this follows directly in one line from the from the definition. Indeed we have it's easy to see that f of x plus g of x this is below the limit as n goes to infinity or oh, given given any x n that converges to x of uh, f n of x n plus the limit as n goes to infinity of g of x n. Uh, this is, by considering this is equal to g of x, and this one is the value 1 applied to f. But then uh, I have a limit plus a limit. I can put everything together inside the same limit. So this actually equals the limit as n goes to infinity of f n of x n. So that now this reads as uh, uh, inequality, the limit inequality <coughs> for f n plus g, f n, f n g. Makes sense. Okay. And as you can imagine, the other like the limits of inequality is exactly the same idea. Okay. So I said that I don't want to erase this. So let me actually cover that. Take a look at the at the gamma limit of a of a constant uh, sequence. So gamma limit. <coughs> so let's 
consider consider f n identity equal to uh, a function f. Uh, and so uh, by the limit inequality, we have that uh, if the gamma limit exists, it has to satisfy that uh, or for x in x and x and x to x. bar, which is the, the gamma limit of x, is less than or equal than the limit as n goes to infinity of f of x n. Um, so now we notice that uh, if notice that if f is not uh, lower semi-continuous. Then there exists a point x bar and a sequence. Um, there exists a point x bar, x bar and a sequence, and we go to x n bar, converging to x bar, <coughs> such that. Uh, such that uh, the linear as n infinity of f of x and bar is strictly below f of x bar. So I'm negating that uh, f is lower than continuous. But then this shows that, uh, I'm erase that. What do I do? What do I do? Oh, yeah, is it? Yeah. 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 Okay. So you guys divide it to four boards. So you can just have boards and leave a half a board. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, so uh, but this would imply that F bar of x bar is actually strictly below or like different from f of x bar. So this is somewhat surprising in the sense that we're taking the limit of a constant sequence and the limit differs from that constant. So uh, the constant sequence, like the gamma limit, Uh, f can be different from f if f is not lower than this. And actually, this shows that it is exactly equal to f if f, if and only if f is uh, lower than the limit exists. Uh, it does exist. Um, it's actually um, it's true that the limit exists for like if you have some kind of uh, <coughs> monotonicity of the event. In this case, it should be easier. I guess I can just define, I, sh I think I can just define f bar of x to be like the infimum over all things xn of the limit. And then it goes to infinity of f of xn. And this one should be uh, the gamma limit. Uh, which, by the way, it's called relaxation in this case. Okay. Uh, so it, it can happen that the constant sequence doesn't converge to the constant itself. And I'm gonna go back on this one later when we discuss uh, lower semi-continuous angle of functions. Okay. Do I wanna practice enough? Let's try. Let's see how this works. <coughs> the relaxation, are you taking int over x and going to x? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, just yeah because it's, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. 
at all the points of this continuity, you just make it lower simultaneous. That is the lower simultaneous angle, yeah. Uh, for, for reasonable functions, like, it's usually defined as the, the greatest uh, lower simultaneous function that is below f. And you can prove that for under reasonable assumptions, it actually coincides with what it says. OK. Um, so that was fun. Now, something else that is natural to ask at this point is uh, how does gamma convergent uh, compare with like other known convergences? Like, what is the relation between gamma convergence and pointwise convergence and or uniform convergence? And the answer is actually fairly easy. And we have that if um, if f n gamma converges to f and converges pointwise to g, then f is below g. And this, this should explain the joke that Kevin made in the email about the gamma mean curve. What's the joke? Go to Korean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is not the place for politics. <laughs> um, okay, so how do we show this? Well, uh, f of x, uh, by de definition, is less than or equal to the limb m as n goes to infinity of f n of x n and which is below um, now I have to sorry I have to take a particular sequence I'm going to take the constant sequence here um, which is just j of x because remember this is item i which I just erased and it said that for every sequence that converges to x these inequalities satisfy <coughs> so in particular I can take the sequence to be the constant sequence and then here instead of a limit this is actually a limit because I'm assuming that f converges point one to g okay um, so this is what I have to say about pointwise convergence for uniform convergence we notice that um, if Fn converges to F uniformly and F is lower simultaneous, then Fn gamma converges to F. So this is actually pretty crucial. It's not true that uniform convergence implies gamma convergence. It's only true when f is lower semicontinuous. And to go back to lower semicontinuous envelopes, uh, it is true that if fn converges uniformly to f, then fn will gamma converge to the lower semicontinuous envelope of the function. Uh, let's, let's just prove this. Okay, and again, it's not surprising that it follows from the definition because that's the only thing we have so far. Um, but notice that um, the limit uh, of f and x n, uh, this is actually equal to the limit. Uh, let's say limit over n of f n of x n minus f of x n plus the limit as n is the infinity of f of x n. And now this one is going to zero for uh, this one is actually zero by uniform convergence and I'm assuming that uh, the limit 
function f is lower simultaneous. So this one will be greater than equal to f of x. And so here we have the <coughs> limit inequality. And again, the other one is uh, satisfied very similar. Okay, so um, it's finally time to get to the meat of the gamma convergence. So, convergence of minima. Um, I don't have space to state this proposition here. So, So let f n uh, and f be functions from x into r. Um, then we have uh, let me go this one. If I, which is the limit in body, is satisfied. For every x, like is that I mean, constant sequence converges to x, or like for every sequence that converges to x, like I mean, one is like lower semi continuity, like condition, right? For every sequence, and then for every x, like oh, I see, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, in one x here, uh, no, I think it's uh, it's just this. <coughs> Like this is the so I have the the limit inequality is satisfied everywhere, and I'm saying that I can control the infimum of f over k by controlling the infimum at the limit. So these are just numbers, right? These are I I, I mean I mean the like the condition like one is satisfied like one condition is like for every x n right? For every yeah. we have like that condition yeah. and then. But he's only considering the minimizer, uh, the minimum. I mean, we want to control the minimum. No, no, you're right. It's for every x and for every x and convert yeah. to x. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, that was my question. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, it's. But yeah, we don't, okay. we don't care about the limb soup. Uh, that's this is item one. That's going to be item two with the limb soup. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, by calculating the limit, 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 the meaning of oh, every okay. x, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Satisfied for every okay. x then goes to like yeah. x, right? One yeah. one is specific for x. Like, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I got, I got. I mean, otherwise it is thing with like just lower semi continuity conditions. So. Yeah, and I'm saying that for every x and for every c when that converges to x, then uh, the limit inequality is satisfied. Then this is true. Okay, uh, and then there is item two, which looks like an i, but it's two. Um, two says that if now, 2 is satisfied. Uh, for every x in x, and you uh, contain an x in open, then the inf 
in over u of f is greater than the name soul over n of the infimum over u of f n. So again, uh, this f is staying well below f n, so that like in some sense uh, we get the nice control minimizer that we want, but uh, everything is still in some sense reachable from like the configurations of f n. And the proof of this one is fairly easy, so I think I want to cover it, especially since the proof of this one, I'm going to use it in a second. Uh, proof. Is the statement clear? Okay. Uh, so we can find the sequence x and <coughs> Delta in K such that uh, the limit over N of the infimum over K of N is actually equal to the limit over N of F N epsilon delta. Okay, and eventually uh, it's struck us. Um, extracting a subsequence from Xn, so up to up to extraction, um, up to extraction, uh, we obtain uh, a subsequence X and K. Uh, maybe K is not the right in here. J such that uh, the limit <laughs> over j of f and j, x and j tilde is equal to this guy over here, which is the limit over n of the infinity over k of f n. So I'm, I'm just taking a sequence for which the, uh, the limit is actually a limit, but I'm also going to ask that uh, x and j converges to some x limit. Here I'm using the compactness of k. Do I erase what I'm trying to draw? Uh, and that where x 
where x is a finite yield. And uh, we want x for u, for x and u, such that we want that f of x plus uh, minus. I want that f of x is below the infinite over u of f plus some positive number delta. So x, the, like fix the delta and big x in u such that this is satisfied. This is always possible because like, I'm using that this is an infinite. And then I'm going to consider a recovery sequence for that point. OK. Uh, then we have that the then we have that um, the infimum over u of f plus delta. This is greater or equal than f of x. But in this case, I'm assuming that the Lipschitz inequality is satisfied. So I know that this is greater or equal than the Lipschitz over n of fn of xn. And since u is open by assumption, uh, xn is in u uh, eventually. So this is actually going to be greater or equal than the limb soup over n of the infimum over u of f n. And this is what I wanted to prove. Or let that I will do, and this is what I wanted to prove. Everyone on board? So this might be kind of a weird or a tangential question, but if you combine the statements for like one and two, do like really crazy things happen when your underlying space is like compact zero dimensional? It's so, like all of your you have like a basis of clopins. Uh huh. I have no idea. Uh, let me think for a second. Uh, yeah, there's something weird that might happen. Some like maybe like the infimum over like k is equal to the infimum over every, like mm -hmm. every set, so that might keep that something constant or something like that. Uh, I can, yeah, that makes sense. I don't know. Cause like it, uh, not really. That doesn't mean that it's constant, but uh, oh, what's the question? Hmm? What's the question? Oh, so like, say that your underlying space was like Cantor space or something, where you have like a lot of like uh, clopen sets around. So then you get like both one and two in tandem. Um, I don't know. It just seems possibly interesting. Yeah, I guess I'll think about it. But yeah, you might get something. Some con you might apply some conditions on the underlying. Okay, uh, one more definition. Definition, uh, this is for C and S, for C and S, uh, so a function, a function f of, I'm using capital letter, so a function f from x into part is coercive um, if for every t in R uh, the set uh, where f is below t is pre compact. And Lots of f is said <coughs> to be uh, mildly coercive if if there is a non-empty non-empty complex. Uh, 
that k <coughs> such that um, Remember, remember the definition of this extent. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> What's that again? <laughs> okay. Uh, so there is a non-empty compact set such that the infimum over x of f over x is equal to the infimum over k of f. And one more definition, a family or a sequence, uh, a sequence of n is um, equally uh, mildly cursive if, uh, well, if you can pick the set that doesn't depend on n. So if there exists k compact such that the infimum over k of fn is equal to the infimum of fn over x. All right. Uh, how much time do I have? Is that 20 minutes? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. okay. I call it small cluster, just for fun. Um, theorem. So I don't know if you remember, the title of this section is Convergence of Minima. Uh, and this is called the Fundamental Theorem of Gamma Convergence. This theorem says that if x is a metric space, then we have a sequence of x with metric space and let fn be a sequence of AP mildly. Coercive uh, functions <coughs> on X. Uh, so that X be a metric space in the X. If, if F is the gamma limit of Fn, then There exists the minimum of f over x, and this is equal to the limit over n of the infimum over x of n. So if this is the case, we can solve the minimization problem for f. There exists the minimizer for f in x. And the proof of this one, the proof of this two is extremely easy if you guys remember the definition of that. Set. Uh, I think I want to add something to this. Moreover, uh, if Xn is a is a precompiled sequence of uh, I don't know it's called almost minimizers I'm not sure such that the limit as n goes to infinity of f n of x n is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the infimum over x of fn, uh, then every limit point of xn
Uh, is a solution to the minimization problem for f? Uh, is a minimum point. satisfied has the uh, compact set that's given by the agui magli coercivity of the sequence of functionals. And the second part of the theorem was with an open set view, and that open set view is just the entire space x. So the infimum over k of f, remember this x still belong, belongs to uh, k, so this is f of x tilde. And by definition, this was equal to the limit of uh, the nymph over n of the infimum over k of fn. But this is the k for which we have the coerciveness condition, right? So this is actually equal to the limit over n of the inf. I can put the entire space of x here. And now I am out of space. The limit is trivially below the limb soup. Uh, the limb soup over n of the infimum over x of fn. And here I'm going to use item 2 from the previous proof to say that this is below the infimum of, um, over x of f. So, uh -huh, that's what I started with. So this x star here is a solution to the implementation problem for f. Mm -hmm. And the rest, the rest of the statement is just um, a triviality, I guess or a useful remark. OK. Uh, so that's the fundamental theorem of gamma convergence. Um, I don't want to talk about lower semi-continuous en uh, envelopes. I think I'm just going to skip to perforated domains, if you guys don't mind. We kind of discussed that before. Um, and yeah, I think I'd rather show very briefly an application of these rather than give like more properties. So, okay. Um, so what I'm gonna show now is um, is an example in which for which like computing the gamma limit kind of uh, gives, uh, as I said translate some kind of information of the minimizers of fn into information on the minimizers of f. And uh, I'm going to need to set up some notation before. So let's consider omega to be in some rn, where n is greater than than 3, and let it be uh, uh, open and bounded. And for, for all that comes positive, let's define 
in the delta to be the periodically perforated domain. So it's omega minus the union of I in the lattice zeta n of the I delta closed, where the I delta where B delta is actually the pole that is centered at I delta and of radius delta to the n over n minus 2. Okay, uh, I have some domain omega and I'm looking at some rescale copy of Zn and I'm drilling all of these radius at the center, like at the vertices of the lens. So here I have something like this. And here I have a ball, another ball, another ball, another ball, another ball, another ball. Something like this. And the domain I'm considering is omega minus this bolt. And keep in mind that we're going to send delta to zero. So that means that we're making the period smaller and smaller, but also the sides of the old is getting smaller and smaller. So it's going to be like a, a very finely perforated domain, like a lot of tiny little holes. What do I want to do with this? Well, G, let G be an L2 function defining the old omega and let I'm going to call it U delta to express the dependence on delta be the function in H10 of omega uh, that is the solution in the solution Minus Laplace in delta equals in G. This is in omega delta. And U delta is zero on the boundary of omega. And uh, the solution to this extended to zero in, uh, let's say, outside. So I'm taking a solution of this PDE and it's going to solve the problem here and I'm extending it to zero inside this old and it's outside of omega. Okay, and what I want to show is that uh, as delta goes to zero, uh, u delta converges weakly in H10 to a function u that satisfies uh, u that satisfies minus the Laplace in of u plus a constant times u equals g in omega and u is zero in the boundary of omega. So this is kind of strange in some sense. There is this weird extra term that pops out in the limit and um, so yeah this is one of the like kind of things that you can do like you have like uh, this will, like you have uh, I have to give you a function first but like uh, this u delta is going to be the solution of the immunization problem of a functional we're going to see that this function like gamma converges to something else and solutions of uh, and um, when solutions converge to something, then by the fundamental theorem of gamma convergence, this is going to be a solution of the uh, of the limit problem, and we're going to show that solutions of the limit problem actually solve this kind of problem over here. 
and it definitely got up the time to do that. Uh, let me just write down the functional sentence. I'll leave it there. Is there any heuristic for this? There is, I guess. It's hard. Um, so the heuristic is for for why uh, for why this thing like for, let me write down the function first. So well, actually, what is C? Surprise. Uh, C is actually the the infimum of the integral over R n of the gradient of k squared such that phi is an h1 function and phi is 1 on d1 0. Can anyone suggest a name for this one? It's the capacity of d1. Okay. Um, Okay, so uh, so if you that is a solution of this problem, then you that is a solution of the minimization problem, minimum of integral over omega gradient u uh, v squared minus two integral of v v such that v is v one zero and v is zero on omega minus beta delta. And a solution to the uh, problem, like in the bottom right corner, is a solution to the immunization problem. Omega, uh, omega, it's a gradient, v squared, uh, plus c v squared, <coughs> minus two g v. <coughs> such that V is And so I don't have the time for that, but um, the idea is that you want to show that this functional over here gamma converges to this functional over here. Uh, the way you do this is you notice that, so first you notice that this part here is continuous uh, in V. So you can actually take this out of the gamma limit and you only have to focus on this part over here. And the heuristic for why uh, these terms pop, pops out is that um, you you can uh, so you can um, uh, deal separately with the gradient of v when you're close to the perforation or when you're far from the perforation. Uh, if you're far for, from the perforation, you can use the lower semi-continuity of the gradient to say that the gradient in everything except the perforation goes to this gradient over here. And since the scaling was defined as delta to the n over n minus 2, you, you can end up proving with a very long computation that the remaining, like the gradient close to the perforation actually gives like gives a quantity of this part. And you end up with the capacity when you want to group the limbs of inequality and you kind of have to optimize somewhere. And uh, the only other intuition I can give on this is that so somehow this problem is is keeping the V uh, like this problem is uh, kind of keeping the V close to zero in the vault. So it kind of makes sense, and in the limit you still want to see that the V was actually being like held to zero, like in this fault. So the, that makes sense that you want to penalize the L2 norm of V. That makes any sense. Uh, it's very end waving, and like the computations are a mess. So uh, I think that's what I want to say. Do um, you have questions? Yeah. If you mess with this exponent, are there other regimes that are interesting, or is this sort of like critical? This is the only interesting regime. Uh, and actually, like, it's not magic. Like, you can, uh, so what you can do is you, you can look at the human. Uh, 
and z. Uh, like the radius, you can keep it like you can keep like i epsilon, and then you have some kind of delta epsilon here, and you play around with the gamma conversion and see that in, in order to um, in order to make the remaining part of the gradient scale like something like this, you have to you need exactly that scaling over there. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's. Uh, comes out from like a direct construction in some sense. Uh, I don't know if there's any intuition there. Yeah. Is that strong conversions or weak conversions? Weak conversions. And do we know strong conversions or not? No. I don't think do we. Mm. I'm not sure, you might be able to group strong convergence, like, I was... Because you're talking about capacity. So yeah, some, yeah, 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 you, you might be, yeah, you should be able to grow that, but um, you, you have to be, you have to be careful, and like, somehow you have to be able to group that you can pick your recovery sequence in H10. I think that's kind of the point there. Um, Yeah, you should be able to move some conversions. Any other question? Right. Yeah. So I mean, I, I was concerning about like the domain, right? That I mean, the center of ball is like shrinking to like zero right. at the same time. Yeah. I mean, like, what? Why we are like thinking about that kind of domain? Because I mean. Oh, that's a good question. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna have some information somewhere. Um, I so I guess like the, the that domain contains zero as well, or it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Like the the period the period is going to zero too. So like you're gonna have more and more odds inside the domain, and uh, but the size is going to zero. I don't know, I think this is used like for model some kind of like impurity in your domain, something like that. Like maybe your function u is some kind of e flow and uh, zero is where like the, I don't know, the, some kind of like material that's resistant to e flow or something like that. I don't know, I'm not entirely sure. I'm totally making this up. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah. I'm less than Giovanni.